But Mark O'Mara, the trainer and driver of Jake Lobel, and talking to him a little earlier, he had this to say. He says, you always have to be aware of the rest of the field in any race of this caliber. Oh, always, always. Uh, no horse is, uh, is unbeatable, and, and that's been proven uh, in every horse's case, even ours. Uh, we can never be too confident. You have to look at every race and, uh, and be very aware of your opponents. Nevertheless, Jate Lobel will be the prohibitive betting favorite. A look at the odds board will tell you that. Uh, Mark O'Mara says, though, that he does expect to get some competition in this race. Nobody's going to stand aside and let him walk away with that half-million-dollar share of the winner's purse. So we asked him who his toughest competition would come from. They all earned a spot to come back to the final, and, and you have to be aware of all of them. The, the biggest thing, that, like you had just said, is to underestimate, underestimate your opponent, and uh, we can't do that. Uh, the, the ones that drew next to us, because of the way they draw the race, the, the divisional leaders are the ones, obviously, to, to be the most concerned with. And uh, they both horses raced extremely well in the eliminations, along with Log and, uh, and some of the other horses that finished second and third in the other races. We're back at Greenwood Raceway in Toronto, where Jake Lobel has just won the 1987 running of the North America Cup. A $1 million purse, the first in the history of Canadian, or Canadian horse racing, rather, either standard bred or thoroughbred. And standing by in the winner's circle right now with the trainer and driver of Jake Lobel is Earl Lennox with Mark O'Mara. Mark O'Mara, congratulations with your victory with Jake Lobel. Thank you very much. You had to have the scare of your life in that one. <laughs> well, every time you go to the racetrack, uh, it's quite a thrill, and uh, you got awful close. Now, in the race he was beaten in, in uh, the Meadowlands, he was passed at the head of the stretch, but this one, it was a tooth and nail battle right down to the wire. It sure was. <laughs> okay, we're going to have a look at the uh, replay here, and I'd like you to describe uh, what happened. In fact, I made $5 on the race. I predicted <laughs> that you would go to the front and would not let anybody go, and you did just that. Well, it, that's just the way the race worked out. We had a big head of steam up going out of there, and uh, I had a choice of maybe they were all coming out of there, so I took, took the road uh, down the highway. Now, Buddy Gilmore challenged early with stage door Stevie, and you elected not to let him go at any point. Well, there was other horses that were parked at the same time. If, if it was just him coming out of there, I possibly would have let him go, but there was other horses, and uh, he was one that I had to beat. So no matter what, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't give him a uh, chance. Your horse left so fast that uh, Frugal Gourmet was able to tuck in behind you in front of Log and the trailing horses. Yes, yes, we got out of there awful fast. Were you aware of what horse was immediately behind you? No, I was not. So at this point, uh, you're just, did you say anything to Buddy here, goodbye? No, no, there was no goodbyes. He was still in the horse race, just like the rest of them. Okay, they go past the half, and I, an unbelievable half for Greenwood, one, uh, 55 seconds, and you're on the way to a track record. And in the back stretch here, uh, Frugal Gourmet is still keeping up. Yes, he was. Now, you can hear him how close he is to, you know, what are you doing at this point? I'm just trying to, to get my horse's attention and have a full head of steam getting home. I want him to be pacing just as fast and just as hard as he can. Did you look back at any point? Well, I looked around to see how far back the other horses were and to check and see how, how close the, they might be coming. That was a three-quarter time, 123 and two, and of course the fastest three-quarters ever over Greenwood. Frugal Gourmet is obviously a trip horse. He got the trip here on Sunday night, and uh, Trevor waited until late. You're inside the eighth pole before he pulled him. Yes, I thought it. I thought uh, he might possibly get by me here. Uh, it's a long lane here, and uh, Trevor's had the luck uh, in this race before, where he got up a nose. It looked like he might have done the same thing again this season. Looked like a repeat from last. There'd be a lot of marks on the saddle pad. <laughs> Both horses. <laughs> There's the photo. It was a nose. It was a Just nose. a nose. So that's as close. Uh, Fortunately, my horse's head was was tipped out in front of him, and I think that was the margin. The cart surged back and forth through the stretch there, and uh, of course your horse is a nice long horse, but uh, he had it when he needed it. <laughs> At the wire, yes. Congratulations once again, Mark. Thank you, Earl.